This is an excerpt of a recent power-up webinar covering new features in Final Cut Pro 10.8. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this short video, I'll show you how to improve the look of your video using the new color adjustments effect in Apple Final Cut Pro 10.8. Now we get to the really sexy stuff, and the sexy stuff involves color. This is a photograph shot by Juliana Stein, made available through Pexels, and thank you, Pexels, for making it happen. She doesn't look bad, but she's a little green. I could go to the color wheels or the color board and dial out some of the green, but that requires me to understand how exposures work and how color works and how you cancel a color and how you enhance a color, and for many of us, that's a bridge too far. So Apple has a new feature. I'm going to select the clip, go up to the inspector, and go to the color inspector. And I'm going to select, if I'm doing exposure corrections, I use the color board. If I'm doing color corrections, I use the color wheels. And if I'm not clear what to choose, I'm going to go down here to this is new color adjustments. With the clip selected, I can enhance light, which means exposure, or color, which means a color error. It doesn't give it a look, it solves a problem. I'm going to click Enhance Light and Color. Watch her face in three, two, one, woof. Boom. This is before, and this is after. It took the green away, added some rosiness to her cheeks, and it looks lovely. Well, let's go to an image that I've used for years, like the green girl. I want to get rid of that green cast. I, I should be able to do that, but I, I can't remember how that works. So I select the clip, go up to the color panel, go down to color adjustments, and I want to adjust both. Well, in this case, I just want to fix the color. I don't want to adjust the exposure. So I click the color button. Watch this in two, one, woof. And look at that. This is before and this is after. Now, there's still, to my mind, a little bit too much green in that picture. But if you don't understand what color adjustments need to be made, this is so much better. Let's try another one. This one, definitely green cast. Go to color adjustments. Click on light and color. Watch this in two, one, woof. That is perfect. Really, really nice. But what I really like about this, where Apple finally got the concept right, as opposed to in the past, is here. This is a little dark, and it's a little bit off color. I want to correct it. So I'm going to go to Color Adjustments. Remember, that's the new setting inside 10.8. And this time, I'm going to click Enhance Light and Color. Okay, Lisa is better, but she's magenta. She's seriously red. Hmm. How do I reset that? Click the button again, and I'm back to where I was. Now I've enhanced it. I want to keep the exposure, but I don't want to have color. So notice the color button is blue. Click it, turns it off, and the color adjustment is gone. I can, if I want, make it brighter by grabbing the exposure. And this is what I like, is that Apple has made changes to a setting and left those settings exposed so I can see what it adjusted and I can tweak it further. Most of the time they make an adjustment and hide all the adjustments so you don't know what's been changed and what hasn't. Drives me nuts. But here, Apple has left the controls available, which just makes my life easier. I can add some warmth down here if I want to pull this up. Warmth is a shift between blue and yellow. To reset it, by the way, just click this and click again. Everything resets to zero. Let's turn this on. There we go. Click and click. And then tint goes between uh, magenta and green. I generally don't want to have her be green. So we'll just reset that. But how do I fix this? I've, I've enhanced her exposure. I've boosted it manually, but she's still red. We'll just take advantage of something we've learned a long time ago and apply it in a different environment. This line right here represents the color of skin tone. What's cool is that regardless of what race or ethnic group we belong to, all of us have the same red blood under skin. 
And that's what gives our skin color. We all have the same color. We don't have the same grayscale. So I can tell that the face is the right color if pure skin is sitting somewhere on this line. Clearly, we have different amounts of saturation, different amounts of grayscale, but not different amounts of color. So how do I tweak this? Crop the image. I'm going to isolate on something which is supposed to be... I'm going to isolate on something... Just stop helping. I'm going to isolate on something which is supposed to be skin. I could isolate on her face, but the problem is most women, and we have to assume this, most women wear makeup. Some don't, but we have to assume they do, which means that if I try to color grade off makeup, I'm not going to get good results. But very few people put makeup on their neck or their chest. So I'm going to isolate just on her skin here because there's no makeup. Now look at what's happened over here. Is that on the skin tone line? No, it's way over here, halfway between red and magenta. There's two ways that we can tweak this. One is, let's keep this color adjustment, click the downward pointing arrow, and let's add color wheels. If I go to the bottom of color wheels, way down here, notice hue. What hue allows me to do is to rotate all the color as a group. So all, notice how the vector scope is changing. The problem is the color rotation starts at 12 noon. I want to go counterclockwise. The only way to go counterclockwise is to go a long way clockwise and pull it all the way over here. So what I've just done is I've rotated the entire color of the image to here. Now, because it's a mid-tone, I'm going to just boost the enhance. I'm going to boost the saturation a bit and take a look at this and look at that much, much better color. This is before, I got to get back here. This is before and this is after. Before and after. Now, another thing we could do if we want, let's go back to color wheels. Color wheels, there we go. I could reset the hue, set this to zero, and go back and isolate on her skin. Here's option two. I like the hue because it's easy. Notice I still have this more saturated. We got a little bit more saturation because I haven't changed that. But now I can grab the midtones and just drag the midtone color dot over and park it on top of the flesh tone line. That also works if we click reset. But I've got a little bit of green in her face, so I'm going to just take the green out of the shadows by pushing this up away from green. To remove a color, you add the opposite color. And now we've color corrected this manually without using the hue. Where, how did we get there? Let's go back here. This is before and this is after. Before and after. If you haven't played with the hue control, you need to know what it does and how it works. Really, really fast way of changing the color of the entire image. I like working with the color wheels because I think I get something much more accurate. I mean, this is nice skin tone, good shade link, good shading, and I got the the <laughs> I got the exposure using color adjustments, and then I used the color wheels to add a manual color adjustment. This was an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar showcasing new features in Final Cut Pro 10.8. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 366. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's almost 2,000 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.